subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hello everyone rahul shaya trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor the second half of 2022 has started with a bang i should say after sliding in the first half the indices have staged a smart recovery and have recovered a lot of the ground it lost in the first half but then that's the stock market for you it never goes up in a straight line it will go up a great deal and then fall with equal intensity and then go up again and it's through these frequent rises and falls that it creates a new high every few years so will the second half of 2022 be one such period will the benchmark indices create a new high in the second half or will they continue with the downward journey and pile more misery on to investors well it's said that in the stock market history does not repeat itself but it does rhyme which is why looking into the rearview mirror may not be such a bad idea after all here is a snapshot of the historical returns generated by the sensex over the last 30 years now one thing that stands out as far as the yearly returns are concerned is that we can see more green than red in fact green dominates red by 4 is to 1 in other words markets have been up 4 years for every year that they have been down i think this is a great reminder for those investors who stay out of the market because they are constantly worried about some or the other macro factors you see there's no doubt that fear is one of the strongest emotions however giving into your fears constantly is not the way to make money in stocks in the stock market it pays to stay more greedy than fearful because all the stocks do correct every now and then they eventually recover and go on to give great long term returns now does the stock market recover in the second half after a correction in the first half well the news is not good to be honest the benchmark indices were down 9% in the first half of 2022 Before 2022 there have been 11 instances where the index gave negative returns for the first half of the year out of these 11 only in the year 1993 and the year 2020 did the sensex return more than its long term average of 15% to 16% in all the other 9 instances sensex ended up with poor returns and even closed in the negative 6 times out of the 9 Therefore if history is anything to go by there isn't a very strong chance of the sensex making a recovery and closing the year significantly in the positive in other words there's a stronger chance of the markets having a poor outing in the second half of 2022 as well now another way of looking at it is from the returns angle you see the sensex will have to go up by at least 26% in the second half to earn a respectable return of 15% for the full year is this possible well nothing is impossible but given where the broader market valuations are placed and the macro economic situation in india and across the globe it's a tall ask to be honest therefore even from this perspective the second half of 2022 doesn't look all that exciting now i know what you're thinking just about a week back i came out with a video which said that one of my favorite indicators has turned bullish and therefore it is time to turn bullish on the stock market and now i am saying that the outlook for the remainder of the year is not that great so why this dichotomy why this opposing viewpoints and whether there is any way to resolve them of course there is let me tell you how I'm sure you've heard the famous Warren Buffett dictum of being greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. It's a very powerful statement no doubt. However, if you are 100% invested all the time, you won't have the money to invest when others become fearful and it is your turn to be greedy. Likewise, if you want to be fearful when others are greedy, you will have to sell some of your stocks and go into the safety of cash or bonds. you can't sell these stocks and buy new ones because that won't make any sense this will not make you fearful but turn you back into a greedy investor therefore if you must be fearful when others are greedy you need to sell some stocks and move into cash or bonds and if you must be greedy when others are fearful 
you need to have some corpus that you've set aside so that you can buy stocks. Well, it is because of these very challenges, I believe in the strategy of having at least 25% in cash and 25% in stocks at all times. In other words, if you have rupees 100 to invest, always keep rupees 25 in cash or bonds and rupees 25 in stocks. The remaining rupees 50 you can move around based on the broader stock market valuation. If you think the stock market is overvalued, you can move this entire rupees 50 in bonds and thus have 75% allocation to bonds or you can have 50-50 in both. Likewise, if you think the stock market is undervalued, you can have the entire rupees 50 in stocks and take the stock allocation to as high as 75% and keep only rupees 25 in bonds. Once again, you can be 50-50. Therefore, you should look at this allocation say once every year and bring it back to rupees 25 each in stocks and bonds and also decide where you want to put the remaining rupees 50. This technique will allow you to allocate more to stocks after the market has fallen, which means it will allow you to be greedy when others have turned fearful. Likewise, it will also allow you to take money out of stocks after the market has gone up a great deal, which means turn fearful when others are greedy. Now, I have been using this technique in my services and the results have been quite encouraging to be honest. Anyways, now coming to the point of two opposing views. If you agree with my earlier video and think that it is time to turn bullish, you can increase exposure to stocks and take it to 50% or even 75% if you want, but not beyond that. On the other hand, if you don't agree with my earlier video, and in fact you agree with today's video, you can increase the bond exposure and take it to 50% or even 75% so that you have a lot of money to invest if market falls over the next six months. Now this way of approaching things will ensure that you'll make good money if you are right but it won't be a disaster if you are wrong. You will still have enough money in either scenarios to take advantage of the next bull market. Therefore, don't worry about whether this recovery is fragile or robust. Just stick to your process and you will be fine over the long term. Well, that's all from me today. Until next time, goodbye and take care.